here and you're watching, the light still shines. And what's that light, neighbor? You got it. It's the truth that's in God's word. And I'm glad to be with you. I'm seeing citizens. If you're watching me in the nursing home, what's going on? Why be down? How you feeling? My brothers and my sisters behind the prison walls, I am praying for you. Those of you in rehab or wherever you may be, God is still God. It doesn't matter. And I want you to write me and you see that big word pouncing. It's coming right. It's coming right. Oh, it just say my finger pouncing on me. You see, what does it say? Sub, come on, come on. Sub what? Subscribe. And now he come my address. You see it just sweet right on in there. That's my address. You see it? Yeah, I know. Did you see it? And it has my address and my phone number. Why don't you write me? Why don't you call me? And you and I, we can become pen pals. And I'm excited. I am praying for you. Maybe don't you be worrying about stuff for tomorrow. You got to live in the moment. Right? I was just talking to this great group of people before we came on YouTube saying, you got to keep your mind on right now. Well, then we're going to continue with that great message that we had started a couple of weeks, a few weeks ago. And the name of our lesson today is Satan Knows How to Draw You, Part 3. It all starts with the man, Part 2. Rebell rebellion spreads. Satan knows how to draw you, part three. It all begins in your mind, part two. Rebellion spreads. Rebellion spreads. Before I give you a definition of rebellion, I want you thinking about, and you might say that that might be such an unusual subject, but for example, very small example, have you ever been at work? You happy, joyous. Maybe you got up early enough to have your prayer time. Maybe you got up early enough to have breakfast with your children before you send them on the school bus. You just content, thanking the Lord you have a job. But now you at work. And somebody has not been as grateful as you've been over the weekend. And all they do is got to come. Talk about their lazy children. Well, the children could be dead, not just lazy. Right. Talking about their companion. Well, the companion could be in a nursing home instead of going to work every day. Talking about, and then before you know it, it ain't even noon time. There you got it. There you are. They just seduced you, and now here you start complaining. That's what our message is about. You have taken on a personality of somebody else. They have contempt. They have infected you. You started out in the morning. Think about it. Think about it. You started out in the morning full of great joy. You can hear the birds chirping. It might be cicadas now, but the birds, they chirping. Oh, those cicadas, they can be real loud. Uh, squirrels jumping from the tree over your roof, over your <laughs> roof. They jumping from the tree over the roof, and they just running around doing what squirrels do. You just as happy, and you looked up, maybe you saw the ending of a rainbow. You think about God's promises that He ain't gonna flood the earth. No, woo! You just happy. And there you are. You at work seven o'clock. Here's your ten o'clock break, and you mad, fuming. You gotta think of something to be mad about. <laughs> <laughs> then your your Rolex index. There it is. <laughs> You ain't really got no problems. You just have to think yourself of a problem. But you've been affected by somebody else's thing of discontentment. You've been influenced by somebody else's unhappiness, and now you are contaminated. That's what our lesson is about today. What does it mean to be rebellious or rebellion? Rebellion is open, organized, and armed resistance to one's government or ruler. It's resistance to or defiance of any authority, control, or tradition. Seducing spirits cause people who are under their influence. Now remember, I started out by saying, you woke up today, you felt good, but by the time you at work at seven, by the time 10 o'clock come, you've already been influenced by somebody else who's unhappy, some disgruntled employee, some unthankful person. Seducing spirits cause people who are under their influence to act in a particular way. And then those spirits mock 
and make fun of the person that they are seducing. The devil laughs as his lust for power and control is being fed. But the person under his influence doesn't realize that he is being mocked. So when the devil uses you, him and his demons is laughing at you while you acting a fool. You know, you might not know what I'm saying. You at work. Let's go back to work. Let's go back to work. I remember I worked at this place once. And these people decided... These people here can't uh, make us not use, uh, say we can't use our cell phones at work. That's what our, that's our rights and privileges. I don't know where they read this at, but they, um, we, we can use our cell phones. So maybe around 9 o'clock, 9.30, I started seeing people, women, <laughs> wearing these bright pink shirts with, the, with a copy of a phone on the front. I'm like, okay, where this going to go? <laughs> I'm like, so now where this going to go? So a little while later, you know, HR passing back, acting like they don't really see nothing, but they do see it. So a few more people got on board with their pink shirts. I said, now where this going to go? Way after while in the afternoon, I seen them shirts was covered up. They had been given a letter, which was copy of the human resource policy. <laughs> so all that bad talking, they was talking. People was looking at them like, <laughs> and maybe they ain't saying it. So it's sort of like what the devil does to you. When he gets you to fuss and to fight and to be angry about nothing, trivial stuff. And he just standing in there because now you know he got a wedge in your marriage. Now you know he got a wedge. He got the possibility that you can lose your job and he's mocking you. So now he got you to listen to your friends. Now you steal from your mom. You done stole somebody's car. You done approach somebody with a gun. And so now they're laughing at you because they know what your end's going to be before you realize what your end's going to be. <coughs> Rebellion spreads. So listen to that again. Seducing spirit, listen. And you know when you watch the news, you'll be saying to yourself, I know we do. What, did, did he not think he was going to get caught? What is wrong with him? What is he doing? What is he doing? But the seducing spirits, it, 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 it cut the clarity off of your mind. It makes you feel like you're invincible. It makes you seem like that nobody can't stop you, but maybe somebody can stop you. These, these police, they, listen, y'all. Right? Seducing spirits cause people who are under their influence to act in a particular way. And then those spirits, they mock and make fun of the person they are seducing. The devil laughs as his lust for power and control is being fed. But the person under his influence doesn't even realize that he is being mocked. When those people become possessed, they become Satan puppets to do whatever he wants them to do. And he loves the power that he takes over them. So I'm going to give you another prime example. Travel with me today. I don't know if you can see this book, but I got so many favorites. I know I keep saying it right here. But here's another one. This one right here. Oh, oh we got that. This one. It's called The Unforgivable Sin. And it's the sin that God will not forgive you of. It's the one sin there is no forgiveness of. It's the unforgivable sin. And this book is written by our home church, the Reverend Ernest Angel, The Unforgivable Sin. And if you don't have it, that link should be popping up right, right below here uh, in our comment section. And you can see just how to get this book. Everybody should have this book. But we're going to be reading a little bit today. Everybody knows this story in one form or another. I want you to go with me today in Numbers, the 16th chapter. And today we're talking about it all beginning in Man Part 2, Rebellion Spreads. Number 16, I want you to see how a group of people... Just by a few people. They were influenced and it cost their lives. Satan knows how to draw you. And everybody in here, you better know that. He knows what you like. He knows what you love. He knows what whets your appetite. He knows how to get you right where you are um, just treating people wrong. You know, have you ever had, had not seen somebody but seen them yourself? I mean, let me, let, me just, let me stop with the metaphors and all that. Let me get right down to the nitty gritty. You ever seen in yourself 
One moment you're just nice and sweet, and the next moment you're tripping. It's real fun. I, only had, I had two, yeah, and a little laugh. Can, can you help me? Can, can you help me? I had two, and then I had a little laugh. Everybody else just stone face. I'm like, what's she talking about? <laughs> can you keep on reading that chapter? I just read it to you. <laughs> As sweet as you can be. One moment you in there, you're washing the dishes for your wife. And I don't know what happened between the one moment to the next moment. Now you ain't washing nothing. Rebellion spreads. So, you know, even though we reading something from the Numbers, the 16th chapter today, you, you ain't got to go to the world. You can go to your life. You can go to this past week. You can go to maybe this week. You can go to somebody who said they're your friend. You, can, you teenagers, you can, you can go and look and listen to the person you call your buddy. Are they really, are they really your buddy? People who have influence over you, what are they encouraging you to do? Every true friend wants you to do better. Just a hint. Number 16, 1 through 3, come on, read it with me. It says, Now Korah rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation. Now, underline that if your Bible is a workbook. So these people already had influence over other people. I want you to get that today. You have influence over your children. You look at our society today, you see so many grandparents, 35 years old, a grandparent at 35. Yeah. Come on, somebody. 30-year-old grandma, she going to the lounge with her daughter. Influence, 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 influence. Her father telling his son, don't trust your wife. Influence, influence. Influence. You got your older, you got your older brother who been arrested. I don't know how many times telling you how to be, how to be a G, not a G O O D either. Good. You gotta think about the influences in your life. Think about the people that's in, the people who have influence. What are they influencing you to do? Is it to better you? What are they influencing you today? What, what are they influencing you to do? How are, how are they encouraging you? Rebellion spreads. Then you come home telling your parents everybody's doing it. But everybody ain't doing it. Influence is spread. What are you doing with your influence? So it was 250 princes of the assembly, number 16, 1 through 3, famous in the congregation, men of renown. Underline of your Bible is a workbook. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. That is, you're talking about some prophetic scripture. There it is. Now you notice this. We in the book of Numbers. Can you say amen to Numbers? We pass the Exodus. You don't see nobody rising up in Exodus. Can you say amen? amen. I mean, it's Genesis. What is it? Come on. Genesis. Come on, name the books of the Bible. What is it? Genesis, Exodus. You see what I got to go through here? But notice when they decide they're going to rise up. Right. It's after the Red Sea. Right. Can you say after? After. Can you say after? After. After the Red Sea. Ain't nobody doing no fussing. Free going over the Red Sea, Virgin. Everybody hold their hands, building nets for one another. <laughs> <laughs> you saw my calf today. I saw my calf tomorrow. Everybody. Everybody's going to eat who's with me. Everybody's, everybody, everybody's going to have bread to eat. Free Red Sea. Cosmopolitan 
husband and said, water rolled up on both sides. Everybody love everybody. Oh, don't leave this. Oh, 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 don't leave this donkey. I got it, I got it, I got it. Get that kid, get that kid. Once <laughs> they brought the Red Sea. It's like, not about your, I don't care about your wife. I don't care about your donkey. Get that donkey. That's right, there. We crossed the Red Sea now, baby. What love got to do with it? She ain't sorry yet, but she will. What love got to do with it? They are famous, but they <laughs> they just got famous in numbers. It says, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy. All of us, we just alike. God is using all of us. How dare you have to rest seat? Lift yourself up. To say you're some noble one. They weren't saying nothing when it was in trouble. Amen. Amen. And this is something for us to take a note of today. Yes, yes, yes. Watch how you treat people yes. that Amen. help you, that lift a hand up to you. You got to stay humble at all times because life can turn around in just a moment. Amen. You be kind to people. You show love. That one you kicking around because they might be going through something. You can't never count people out as long as God is God. Yes, the Bible says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. But here they are, they famous. Everybody know I'm head to the side. Can you see them enough? <laughs> Everybody gravitate toward them because they look like they cool. But see, when you, who you say you are and what you say you are, is it, it has to be proven. This, this girl was 15 years old, this tennis champ, bam. Everybody's so excited over her. She's been the first one in her age group to make it to this tennis match since I don't know when. They said the date, but I don't remember. It, 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 it makes you happy. To see such a thing. But she ain't only talking it, she walking the walk. I mean, you in a match. Like all of us, all of us here, we in a match. For our lives, for our souls, for our children, for our companions, for our job. We are in a match. Amen. And did you get the match point this morning on the way here? Or did the enemy get the match point? And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, You take too much upon you, see all the congregation is holy. Every one of them. And the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. So they decided, Corinth them decided, uh, after the Red Sea, God talking to me too. Now that I think about it. I ain't had a, I ain't had the revelation hadn't seeped in when we was going across through the Red Sea. When Pharaoh's army was on our back, I couldn't see things clearly. <laughs> but now we're on the other side of the river. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving me that revelation. God is with me. But listen to the scripture. They've been planning this for a while. And they want to wait until the right time. It said, now Korah rose up before Moses, verse 1, number 16. They didn't just rise up. They were already planning it. Remember when they said, up Aaron, build us a golden calf? They already knew he was weak. They said, we know we want not what has happened to Moses. He up there with God. Maybe God took him now. But we need, we need something to worship because the old mentality, the old way of thinking, the old, it all starts in the mind. The old way of thinking. 
when you're challenged, when the enemy challenges you, when you're a battle to go back to those old ways. Oh, it, it, it's all about your mind. What are you feeding your man? What are you feeding yourself? What kind of music do you listen to? Too? What kind of images do you allow to come into your eyes? That's going to be the make or the break of you when your time comes. And Korah decided that they could reach God for themselves. You got to think about and, and you know, as we study this lesson today, we know how foolish Korah and them were. But what about the situations that happen in our lives on a daily basis? Who's getting the match point? Arguing in front of your children. Ain't nobody winning. Amen. Ain't nobody winning. Somebody. Nobody's winning. Tearing down your children with the other children. Nobody's winning. The devil's getting matched. Huh. Huh. So, Cora and 250 princes, famous, I just can't get away from this, famous men overcome with what kind of characteristics did they have? Arrogance. Rebellion. Against those people that God had put in place. It was rebelling against Moses and Aaron was the same as rebelling against God himself. Upon hearing what was going on, Moses and Aaron fell on their faces. Now think about this. Somebody coming against you, you get down to pray because you know God going to stand up for his people. Yes, amen. Same chapter, number 16. Go with me to verse 28. So once Moses and Aaron heard about the rebellion against God, how many of those people do you think really deserve to cross the Red Sea? We don't know. How many of us deserve to still have good jobs? Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. How many of you deserve to still have good health? Yes. Yes. You hear me talking to you? Yes. How many of us deserve to have good companions? And we don't always treat right. Amen. We want stuff on our terms. And it says here, this is marvelous in my ears. Numbers 16, 28 says, And Moses says, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all of these works. How in the world could a man part the Red Sea? Remember, Pharaoh was after them. But when you are seduced, you don't see the whole picture. Amen. How many times do you think you can keep on sneaking out and taking your mama's car before you get in an accident? How many times do you think you can keep on cursing at home and then getting up here with their song talking about, oh, my God, it's hard. she was giving her testimony today she alluded to tell me that the name of the condition that she had when she rejected God was a nervous breakdown her mind was gone right listen to this again I'm almost done Never you having a good time with me I know right that's what I said 
And Moses said, Hereby you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works. For I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord have, have not sent me. Now, if the normal thing, they just drop dead, then God ain't sent me. But if he do something he ain't never did before, yes. holy Lord, God Almighty, if he did something that he ain't never did before, couple have been separated for years and they come back together. If he do something he ain't never did before. A child early on in, early in, in school, fourth or fifth grade, being diagnosed with attention deficit and now they are, they number one in the high school. If he did something he ain't never did before. <laughs> People on the job shouting about, you need a degree, you need but then you are you the vice president. Amen. If he did something that he never did before. Amen. He said, then the Lord have not sent me. He said, but if. Can you say, but if? But if. But if. But if. But if. But if. He says it, but if the Lord make a new thing. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up with all that are pertaining unto them, all they stuff. Say all they stuff. All they stuff. And they go down quick into the pit, not no escalator ride down, <laughs> they going down swift. <laughs> then ye shall understand that these men have what? Provoked the Lord. And it came to pass that as he had made an end of speaking these words, listen, listen, y'all. Moses talking, he in his speech ground open up. Can I tell y'all that? Yes. Listen, it's right here in the word. It says, and he had made an end of speaking all these words that the ground lay asunder that was under them, and the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed them up, and all they stuff, all the men, all the houses, everything that was related to Korah and all these goods. Now, can you imagine there? You out there, uh, over there in Jackson Park somewhere, the ground opened up, the ground might open up and you on the edge, but you don't go down in a hole. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Don't mean that it couldn't happen to you, but it didn't happen to you that day. That's right. Yeah. Come on, let, let, let's use our knowledge which the Lord has given to us. They said all they stuff. But look how seduced the people were. Do you think they were humble themselves? You think they were yield? You think they were honor God? But rebellion spreads. Listen to it. It says, they and all that are, are pertaining to them went down alive. They went to hell alive. And the earth closed them up and they perished from among the congregation. Now think about this. There's no way that Moses could have did this. Never hinder what God is doing and don't judge. Let God have his way. But look at these brothers. Look at the brothers. Verse 41, look at the brothers. After the Israelites saw the judgment that came on Korah and his allies, what did they do? You think they started pleading out for their souls, asking God to help them? No. It says in verse 41, number 16, but on the morrow, so they was mad all night. Have you ever been mad all night? I ain't gonna even look up. Let me count. Let me look at my nail. Oh, you know my twin wanted wedding anniversary coming up. Oh, and I'm gonna have a wedding dress. But did you did you see it? All night long. The Bible said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. You going to heaven with evil in your heart and you spitting bullets in your sleep. <laughs> 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 Mama told him to call on God. <laughs> Mama told him to call on God. Don't turn that phrase on until it's been fixed. <laughs> this is why he's sleeping. Okay, give me that, that screwdriver. This is why he's sleeping. He fixed the furnace. <laughs> You're so angry. You're so mad. 
The Bible said, don't, don't, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. You think God, you think God hearing you? You think he's going to try to help you? You think if you die in that state, you're going to heaven? No, you're going to hell. So listen to this. Listen to this as we close today. It says, after the Israelites saw the judgment that came on Korah and his allies, what did they do? What, what, what do they do? But on the morrow, all, underline that if your Bible is a workbook. It says, number 1641, but on tomorrow, all. So there's still some deceit left in the congregation that spread to those that remained. Mm -hmm. It says, but on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron, saying, you have killed the people of the Lord. How can they be people of the Lord if they're talking against the servants of God? Mm. Yeah. Now, let's go back. Let's go back to when they had the, when the uh, Pharaoh got mad and said that he took the mortar uh, from how they made the bricks. They took right. out one of the ingredients. Yes. Now, let's go back to the beginning when they tried to kill all the boy babies. Uh, they said that if it's a girl, let her live. But if it's a boy, let him die. But the Bible said the harder they work them, the more babies they had. Read the Bible. Said, read the book. Read the book. Read the book. It's in there. Is it in the book? Right? Yes. Moses couldn't have opened up the earth and swallowed all those people and their houses. But what was the point? More in the congregation was the sin. God blessing you, blessing your home, blessing your marriage, God blessing. You know, get away from all the people that's negative. All they're going to do is make you what? Double-minded. And what doubles your mind is, so you want to be with them because they got influence in your life. No, cut them off. Amen. It's a sacrifice to be what God wants you to be. It's a sacrifice. Do, do you think that the power of the Lord can stay in this church if I had anything in my heart and then you came up here like with cancer and couldn't be healed? Come up here and mention body that you're not able to be free. And because of something you said, forget you. I think that's what the songwriter said, forget you. <laughs> Did he say it? God healing your marriage. God healing your man. God healing your body. Cut them old folks off. Did they? You ain't got nothing in common with them no more. You a new person. You coming up out of the wilderness. Yes. Yes. Stop laying down with dogs. Get that flame off. Set you free from. They ain't going nowhere. Matter of fact, they didn't gain their number. 
Because they used to be in you, now they're after you. They used to possess you, but now they're after chasing you. But they can't come now to blood. That hedge is all around you. So you say, I'm trying to get them. I'm trying to get them to matter. I'm trying to get them through their wife. I'm trying to get them through their husband. I'm trying to get them through their kids. But they got a hedge all around them. The power that's in the blood. I dare you to honor God with all your being. Can't nothing take you down but yourself. Yes. Can't nothing hinder you but yourself. Amen. Come on, brother. You and God is a majority. Leave them people alone. Them dogs. Leave them down there in the dirt. Come on. Lift yourself up. Dust yourself off. Say, I got a father, please. Yes. Yeah. I'm marching on. Yes. Come on, give me a And you can read the rest of this in Numbers, the 16th chapter. It says there that the people rose up and had contemplated it all the night long. And see, when you come up against God, you lose your reason. But more in the congregation, they were deceived. They were taken over by the devil. And it's a dangerous thing to fight against the work and the power of God. It does not matter what you know. It matter what God knows, what God puts his approval on. And it goes on to talk about how the people they came up against Moses and Aaron. They had accused them of killing the people of God. So now Moses, notice this. Moses and Aaron still trying to save the people in the midst of them rising up. And it says here, number 1642, as we close today, and it came to pass, neighbor, when a congregation was gathered against Moses and Aaron, that they that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation, and behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. And Moses and Aaron, they came before the tabernacle of the congregation, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get up from among these congregation, that I might consume them as in a moment. And they fell on their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Boy, run, take this censer, and put fire therein from off the altar, and put in incense. Go quickly, hurry up, go unto the congregation, make an atonement, plead for them, ask the Lord to forgive them. Get on your knees and ask God, tell God that they're ignorant. Tell God to forgive them. Get on your knees, run Aaron, run to save the lives of the people who rose up against us. And every day we run it. Every day we calling out God's name for victory over those who rise up against us because they're not rising up against us, but they're rising up against God, Lord, God Almighty. Come on, give God praise. And Moses told Aaron, boy, run, 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 boy, run for your life, boy, run, 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 run for your life, for the plague has begun among the people. And so Aaron put on incense and made an atonement for the people, and he stood between the dead and the living, and that's what you do. You stand between the dead and the living, and the plague will stay. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700 beside those who died because of the matter of Korah. Think about that. Korah and his group had been killed, and now 14,700 more people were killed for accusing Moses and Aaron of killing the people of God. Korah's rebellion is a true picture of people blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. But rebellion spreads. Neighbor, I hope you had a good time with me today. My God, it was exciting to be with you today and to share the word of God. But you got to make sure you don't have none of that rebellion. It does not matter what you think. It does not matter how you feel. But it is what God knows that counts in the very end. And you got to stand for God. It does not matter. It's not a choice. You can't be one way at work and be another way at home. You, mm -mm. But hell, you say you got to live the life that you sing about in your song. You got to take a stand. This is an hour. You have to take a stand. And the Lord says that if you be um, embarrassed of him before this generation, he said he will be embarrassed of you in heaven and before all the angels. Where neighbor is time for me to cut out. It's time for, yeah, I know, right? I got to go. But before I go, I want to pray for you. Everyone, this great conversation.
congregate you to stand. And I want to say the sinner's prayer with, with you today. And oh my God, that child, that deformed child, or oh maybe you're sick today and the doctors have given up on you. I am not a healer. No man can heal and no man can forgive sins. But I am a Jesus believer. The Bible said that believers will lay hands on the sick and that Jesus will get you well and will only point you to the cross. Neighbor, you can have no, you can have a change in life today. I don't want everyone to lift their hands up. And maybe you out there. Come on, lift those hands up. Say the sinner's prayer with me today. Maybe you have been rebellious. Maybe you have been complaining. Maybe you've been doing a little fussing in the home. And that's why you can't get well. God don't play. God don't play that. Right? Come on. Everybody's saying, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. For sinning against you. For sinning against you. But I have come home. But I have come home. Never to leave you again. Never to leave you again. Lord, I'm the one you're talking about today. Lord, I'm the one you're talking about today. Lord, I have been found guilty. But I'm asking for the power that's in the blood. I'm asking for the power that's in the blood. To redeem my soul. To redeem my soul. To redeem my soul. To redeem my soul. Maybe you have AIDS. Maybe you got the AIDS virus. You know, Reverend Thomas, I had cancer two times. I had once in my left breast and I had cancer one time in my head. But the God of miracles, he lives. And I want to bring it right into your home right now. Put your hand on your tablet. Put your hand on your phone. Put your hand on your TV. Realizing you're born before the throne. I cannot heal you. But the God of miracles, he lives. And oh God, in the name of Jesus, I bring the sick and afflicted before you even now, Lord. This is your great work, Lord. This is your great power. Heal them even now. Heal them, Lord, right now. Heal them, Lord. And God will give you all of the honor and all of the glory. And I want you to write me at P.O. Box 498-525 right here in Chicago, Illinois, 60649. And I'll be praying for you. I'll be looking for those letters. God bless you. And I'll see you next time.